Ryan family, Mr. Justin McShane. I was supposed to introduce him. <laughs> well, okay, my name is Justin McShane of the McShane Firm. Uh, we're very happy and privileged to have this press conference to talk about uh, James Hudney and his nearly 36 year path to sitting right here and being with us and being with his family and being with his friends. Uh, I just have a couple of quick uh, points to help out those in the uh, media to make sure that they get the story right and also for the benefit of family members and, and friends that are here. Uh, it's just a couple of slides, if you will, uh, indulge me. It shouldn't take any more than maybe about three or four minutes to explain kind of how this all happened and why it happened so quickly and how we go from uh, 35 years, 11 months, and eight days to today. There is no ninth day. He is free. Um, so if you will, the first thing that we want to do, this is a picture up here of uh, all of us that were present uh, when he was released. Uh, and as you can see in here, um, we have a very special thank you that we want to make sure that we give out uh, to District Attorney Ed Marsico and also especially to First Assistant District Attorney uh, Fran Chardo. Uh, those two men were instrumental in this outcome. And this outcome was rather unique uh, in this area and, and also a way of making sure that everything turned out okay. And so what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about also, uh, the people that helped to make this happen. We have many volunteer uh, pro bono attorneys. That means that our firm got paid zero dollars and zero cents to litigate this uh, matter and a lot of uh, effort that was put behind it. And here are the attorneys that are responsible and some of them are here today uh, along with support staff from the McShane firm. We also would be remiss if we didn't talk about the Pennsylvania Innocence Project Melissa Bluestein, uh, who's their uh, legal director, and also uh, Milan and, and Frank, who helped us out along the way, Frank being an intern, uh, who dedicated many hours, and, uh, and this was eventually designated the Pennsylvania Innocence Project case. Uh, we also, one of the way that we got here is uh, I got involved with the case, um, and um, I looked at it, I remember I was at the American Academy of Forensic Science meeting, and I got all of the documents emailed. You know, it took us over a year to gather all the evidence, to find it all from 1978 to 1979, to find all the transcripts, to find everything together, and all the pictures, and what was left. And uh, we finally all got it together um, as a firm. It got emailed over to me. I was at the American Academy of Forensic Science National Meeting. I just happened to be at the Fire Arson Investigation Subcommittee Meeting. Uh, and I looked at all of these, and I remember it hit me like a two-by-four in the head. I said, here's a man who's convicted and spending his life in prison, and there is absolutely no proof of arson here whatsoever. I was so terrorized in my heart at that particular moment that I knew no matter what, I could not let this go. And I told him, and I went up shortly thereafter, and I met with Mr. Hughney, very first meeting, and I said, uh, I'm going to get you out of prison. I'm going to get you out of prison. You are innocent, because he is innocent. He's as innocent as any one of us that sit here in this room when it comes to this arson. We also had a large hurdle that had to do with funding. Uh, there is no statewide funding for Innocence Project related cases. And what is, uh, what is uh, generated is only through private donations. We set up a website freehugney.com in order to put up all the evidence for anyone to see at any point in time, all of the transcripts, everything that there could possibly be. We were totally transparent. Uh, we wanted the truth to set him free, not technicalities to set him free. Then what we did is we went to a, a crowdfunding source called gofundme.com. Between private donations from people that are listed up here along with anonymous donors, we raised over $10,000 from strangers all across the United States and even internationally towards this cause. Without them, it would not have happened because we would not have had the experts in order to do the heavy lifting to come to the scientific conclusion that there is no supportable arson. And these are those great people. We were able to employ the dream team, if you will, of forensic scientists. And the dream team includes Samuel Blitman, who is a former Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives uh, lead scientist, lead chemist. 
Uh, he was working back in 1974, so he was contemporary at the time that all of this happened. We also were able to get Denny Smith, uh, who is a premier international uh, expert in, uh, in, in any form of fire science. He worked pro bono for free, donated over $15,000 of his own time and because he believed so strongly in this case, and he had a visceral reaction, just like I did. He called me up after he looked at the documents and said, oh my God, this man is innocent. Then we have over here John Lentini. John Lentini, of course, is very famous. He was involved in the Cameron Todd Willingham case, if you remember that gentleman down in Texas, who was eventually executed by the state of Texas that widely science now believes is innocent. He's also been on 60 Minutes, National Geographic, and he's been in involved in a lot of arson exonerations, including this one. Uh, he worked with us, uh, and he was instrumental along with us. James Hugney, I got a uh, email just moments ago from the uh, National Arson Project, which takes a look at old arson convictions and sees whether or not they survive modern scrutiny and modern science. They confirmed today that he is the 31st person in the United States of America to be exonerated by way of science when it comes to arson. So it is a great day for science, for justice, for Jim Hugney, for all of us who live in this community and all of us who care about good and right things. This is, of course, the horrific fire that happened on August 20th, 1978, that this man standing next to me was convicted of. It's what we call a totally involved fire, which means that it was a structural fire that went to total and complete, almost destruction. This is a mother shot of what was left over after the demolition was done, uh, before the demolition was done during the uh, fire suppression moments afterwards. An aerial shot just to show you how truly devastated the area was uh, back in those days. And this, of course, is uh, Jim's son, who unfortunately deceased five days after this fire. And we, of course, pay great tribute to him because he is also an innocent person who lost his life in all of this. If we can also take a look at this, we can see the fire investigators that were on the scene at the time. And uh, what they did is and how they employed uh, forensic science at that time. And what they did is very common myths and mistakes that we now know through science are exactly that, acts of science fiction and myths. This is the crucial key to the case. I'm going to show